in my freezer that I can make for dinner. So we have some lovely boneless stew meat here. Quite a bit of that. We have some hamburger kind of meat like these are some little baby tiny filet mignons and when you cook them up they're like half the size. I'm thinking I'm gonna do something with hamburger tonight. Here we are once again on another episode of what's in my freezer that I can make for dinner. So today we have a pound of ground beef. Now this is not any ordinary beef. This beef is really good beef. What makes it really good beef? Basically it's just from a really fresh cow and then it was frozen right after it was packaged. So that's what makes it really good beef. What am I gonna do with said really good beef today? We're gonna make some shit on a shingle. Shit on a shingle? What the heck is that? Basically, it is hamburger in a gravy mixture on top of some toast. Yes! Now, I don't know about you guys, but I personally like to work with kind of a clean area. So I'm gonna be doing up some of these dishes over here and then I'm gonna be getting to cooking over there. So I will be right back. So the kitchen is clean, we can get back to our story. Diving back into the brain of little mini Melly, I remember this dish being called from my parents army chow that was a much more suitable alias than shit on a shingle to a five-year-old. How do we make said army chow slash shit on a shingle aka what did you guys call it? There is a history to shit on a shingle or army chow which I'll insert here. When I plugged this into Google, it came up with the history of creamed chipped beef, aka SOS, from SeriousEats.com. They referred to it as stuff on a shingle or shit on a shingle, and they seem to think it originated in World War One. The exact origin of SOS is fuzzy, however, their dish consisted of sliced diced beef mixture in a thick gravy and it appeared in military cookbooks. Here we can see a recipe for 100 portions, eight ounces a piece. That's 800 ounces of cream sliced beef. And here is the modern day directions, which is basically how I prepared mine. Browning the beef, melting butter, adding milk, salt, pepper, stirring constantly, and then serving it over toast. So that is a origin in a nutshell for this item. But it all comes down to being able to eat on the cheap, and that is what this is. Ground beef typically is, you know, you could stretch it if you really needed to, um, but all of the other ingredients are pretty much readily available and not very expensive to make or collect in some fashion or another. Today we are going to start out with the giant frying pan, the size or larger actually than my face. And I'm going to turn that on to medium high heat. And to season the army chow, I'm going to use some all purpose seasoned salt. Season all seasoned salt. So I'm just going to sprinkle some of that into the bottom of my pan. Why do I put my seasoning directly into my pan instead of on my meat first? I just like doing it that way. Why not? In with some freshly ground black pepper into the bottom of the pan. So I already have that seasoned salt. I'm not going to add any regular salt, but I am going to put in a little bit of garlic powder and some onion powder. Was all of that traditionally in the army chow that I consumed as a youngling? I don't think so. I think it was probably just salt and pepper and the gravy stuff. This is my twist, not using a recipe, using items out of my freezer. So here we go. Unwrapping that lovely pile of ground beef. Mmm, yummy ground beef is pretty much good to go. So I'm just going to crumble this into my pan. I know you can hear the dishwasher, but can you hear that sizzle? Brown ground beef. This is some really awesome ground beef. Oh, oh. So the very core of this ground beef is pretty frozen still, but I'm pushing through it. I'm able to get my fingers through it enough to break it apart. Play well. Play nice with the other pieces. And 
and uh, washing your hands with soap. Here is that delicious ground beef in my pan, getting a nice sear on top of that seasoning layer that I put down. So we're just going to grill this up until it's all brown. That is some loud beef. I did not realize how loud beef could get. Why are you so loud? It's like the noise of my frying pan is trying to compete with my dishwasher right now. And then I am trying to compete with both of them. Simmer down now. Simmer down. Basically, from my knowledge of how my parents and my grandparents made army chow or shit on a shingle, I mean, let's be honest. Brown your meat, you make a roux, you add some milk, you stir it all together, gets nice and thick and gravy-y, and then it's delicious. Step number one for me is getting my browned ground beef out of the pan so that I can make my roux. Now, a roux typically consists of one part fat with one part flour or thickener of some sort. So I'm gonna go in with some butter and flour. Now, the part that I'm having trouble with is how much of the butter and flour mixture, the roux, I should make to how much milk I should add. Okay, so our ground beef is browned nicely and I'm going to grab out a receptacle for my beefs so that I can make my roux. My meat is out of my pan. Now I'm going to reach around you to get my paper towels. And I'm going to just wipe out the excess fat and oils from the pan. Now I'm going to turn my pan back on to about medium, just slightly over medium, and I'm going to let about two and a half tablespoons of butter melt. Get happy and melt in that nice hot pan. Okay, and then I'm going to grab a whatchamajigit do hickey thingy? One of these plastic rubbery whisk things. Let that butter get all melty. So if it's one part fat to one part flour, then I need about two and a half tablespoons of flour. Here is my one tablespoon, and Amy, if you're gonna watch this, you will see I'm using one of your gifts to me. Do about one, let's start with two and see how it goes. Whiskey, 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 tango, foxtrot. And we want to make a nice roux out of this. And I'm not exactly sure what it's supposed to look like, but I believe I may need a little bit more flour because it should be way thicker than this half almost tablespoon of flour and mix that up there we go yeah the roux should be fairly thick like a paste and another tablespoon you know you can always add more but you can't take it away that is uh, my motto for this show looking much better now we have this lovely pasty situation happening. So now I'm going to go ahead and add some milk and hopefully it'll thicken up. And I'm going to gently add while I stir. Just starting out with probably about a cup or so so that I can get that roux incorporated into that milk and make a nice base for my gravy. It's getting super thick now, loving it. So now I'm going to add more milk just to coat the bottom of the pan. Stir well to incorporate all of that lovely lumpiness. This is where we're at right now. And just keep stirring until it thins itself out. Adding more milk is necessary. 
This is the point where we want to season the shit out of this gravy with a metric buttload of ground pepper. Don't forget to stir as you season because you do not want that milk to burn. And I will be adding regular salt to this, actually coarse salt ground. And remember, you do want a good thick gravy consistency, but also you don't want it so thick that it just sticks to your throat as it goes down your gullet. So a little bit more milk. Just add a little bit at a time. And a little more. You can really add whatever you want to this. This is basically how you make a white sauce. You could add Parmesan, make it an Alfredo. You could add some cheddar and make it a cheddar-ish gravy. You could add some beef broth instead of milk and make a beef gravy. The possibilities are endless. It's looking pretty darn tasty and very gravy-y, but I still think I want it a little bit thinner. Small amount more milk. It's probably the last of the milk that I'll need to add. And then the final step is just to add your ground beef back to your pan, make some toast, and pour that shit all over that shingle. Mmm, ground beef. And there is our shit on a shingle, AKA army chow. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of What's in My Freezer That I Can Make For Dinner. I will see you next time. What's in my freezer? Ah. Ah. Holy shit. Ugh. Why, Ms? It is very, we're gonna make some shit on a shingles. Getting my ground, ground beef, my 